Staples is proud to produce the Raising Cannabis Capital podcast. Today's episode will begin after this brief message from our sponsor. This ain't no desk job, but it's what you got to do to scale up to this in a single growing season. It's how in Oregon alone, we grew and harvested the single largest crop of CBG in the world. Grit, tenacity, hell, whatever you want to call it, the crew at Hampton USA has it by the bucket load. Just getting our seeds in the ground back in spring and growing them till fall was nothing short of heroic. Propagation, planting, maintaining what we have, and building what we need. Trust me, this shit ain't easy. But when it comes to harvest time, our team bumps the bar up to a whole new level. Next comes processing. Everything but the top flower goes off to get turned into crude, distillate, isolate, and water-soluble ready. Our product, like our team, is nothing less than best in class. This plant has always had the power to change the world, but it needs people to make it happen. We're lucky to have those people right here at Hamptown, USA. heading south. And then in March, things really took a leg lower where public companies were trading cheaper than private companies. That arbitrage spread went opposite than it historically does. And then in the subsequent months, we saw a massive snapback in public companies, but not much has changed at all, or to your point, have gotten cheaper on the private side. So now you have one of the richest public-private arbitrage spreads we've ever seen in cannabis. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today at Raising Cannabis Capital, we are continuing this year's Cannabis Investor Series with another former guest and fellow Buffalo, New York native, Morgan Paxia from Poseidon Asset Management. Morgan, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, it's great to have you back. And as I mentioned, you were our guest on last year's Investor Series. And we talked about how you got started in the early days of investing because you were one of the original cannabis investment firms. And so if our listeners want to get caught up on Poseidon, I want you to go back and listen to episode 157 because we have a lot of new stuff to talk about today. So much has changed, Morgan, since we last spoke in November. Let's start today's conversation with your portfolio companies. How has the pandemic impacted them? What's changed? Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to even think about what we talked about back then versus where we are today. Some of the positives that have come from this, I'd say, within the industry generally and, and what we've seen specifically within our portfolio is it's been a, a tremendous amount of focus Part of that has been driven by the fact that the C-suite of cannabis has not been able to travel like we did historically. So everyone just kind of had to hunker down and focus on their their businesses. That's starting to produce some really good results, very good fundamental improvements in their operations. And it happened at the time it needed to in this industry, you know, seeing the industry going into the Darwin phase where you had just a kind of a separation where the stronger, better capitalized companies would start to separate away from the weaker companies. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happened. You could argue that it may have accelerated that path. And you know, the other thing that's been really positive is not only just the focus, but the shift from the consumer. California has been battling a, a very entrenched illicit market for a very long time that was getting stronger going into COVID. Okay. And now we're seeing a retrenchment of the illicit market because consumers, I think, are just so concerned about what they are consuming because of a pandemic. And so now they are opting to buy legally that products are tested, that they're produced by licensed manufacturers, licensed growers, licensed distributors, licensed retailers, giving them that comfort. And that's fantastic. That's a really interesting point that you made. And 
I don't think people appreciate just how gigantic the illicit market is. I mean, we're not even close to half of what the illicit market is. And so the, the fact that we're chipping away at this or COVID-induced chipping away at this is really positive. And there's other positive things that have happened. I mean, the fact that we were deemed an essential service kind of reinforces the belief that eventually it's going to be legal nationwide. You invest in a lot of private companies. Yep. We're hearing that valuations are a little lower than they were at the beginning of the year and that now may be the right time to invest. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. It's, it, it, so it's been really interesting is back in March, public companies were just careening south, right? They've been on this multi-month bear market, very similar to the dot-com bust, just heading south. And then in March, things really took a leg lower where public companies were trading cheaper than private companies. That arbitrage spread went opposite than it historically does. And then in the subsequent months, we saw a massive snapback in public companies, but not much has changed at all or to your point have gotten cheaper on the private side. So now you have one of the richest public-private arbitrage spreads we've ever seen in cannabis where you have very good fundamental private companies, but the capital has not come back. What little capital there was in cannabis in Q1 completely is gone uh, and it hasn't come back really. Anyway, so to your point, yes. And so for us as investors, and we think a couple of things will happen is one, money will start to come back and you're seeing in the public side first, as I was mentioning, and that's just because people are still skittish and they like the idea of liquidity. But then when they start to see how vastly different that spread is, they will start coming into the private markets. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, you could look at some of our, our private companies that just recently made some news, Ascend Wellness Holdings. I saw that. Of a definitive agreement, yeah, with the Illinois operation, 68 million. You know, that company is fundamentally is right up there with the top public MSOs, but trading at a fraction. So should they go into the public market, multiples return on investment. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, it's, it's a very attractive time to be in the private markets. Well, you guys seem to be positioned perfectly. You have capital. What verticals do you like? Areas we've been investing for years, you know, like I mentioned, Ascend, that's, that is a multi-state operator. We're not generally looking for too much in the multi-state space anymore. We think it's more interesting if you actually break it into single state operators. We love California. We think it's got to be one of the most misunderstood cannabis markets because it's hard. It's one of the easiest markets to lose money in. But if you're a good <laughs> operator, it looks a heck of a lot different than it did 12, 18 months ago as far as the fundamental metrics. So we like California from a plant touching side of things. And then technology, still love tech. It's just, there's not too much there. It's not a, a massive market, but we just still see so essential. Like we just did a bridge round of financing with headset. It's just so cool to see that platform as it just keeps getting bigger and, and deeper into the industry. Right now, today, that platform sees 25 cents out of every legal dollar transacted in the United States cannabis. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So their data insights are incredible. I mean, we're on headset every single day. And I don't know how every MSO is not on it every single day or has a team on it every single day. If you're looking to go into a market, if you're looking to do m and it's one of the most powerful tools and it's right there. I want to take a minute to tell you about some really innovative things that our sponsor Cream of the Crop is doing in the cannabis space. Their brand is on fire. They have the fifth best-selling indoor flower brand in the state, and they're profitable, growing their business at 10% a month year-to-date. They're succeeding by helping cultivators turn profits through operation management and consulting in exchange for supply agreements. By bringing 30-plus years of cultivation experience, award-winning genetics, ultra-efficient SOPs, proprietary nutrient mixes, and their brand, they're able to help both operators who are new to the space and ones who want to just increase efficiency. In fact, they just increased profits for one of their clients by $700,000 per month. Just incredible. But what's really exciting is that they're expanding their highly scalable model beyond California. That's right, they're accepting applications across the country for 2021 and 2022 partnerships. Also, if you're planning to invest in cannabis, you should definitely look at Cream of the Crop because they're doing a capital round in early 2021 to help with their brand's national expansion. 
To learn more about partnering with Cream of the Crop or investing in their expansion, go to creamofthecropgardens.com. That's creamofthecropgardens.com. A lot of our listeners, especially now, you know, maybe some of them are coming back to invest in public companies, but a lot of them have a bad taste in their mouth about public companies. And, you know, we talked about the privately held companies, but just by your vantage point, you see way more deals than any individual investor could possibly see. In addition to that, what are some of the other advantages that an investor would have working with Poseidon? Uh, you know, it's time in the industry and our dedication to trying to bridge the gap between you know, our obligation to our investors and being founder friendly. That is a constant push and pull. But we ultimately believe that if you get behind the right companies, the right teams, the right areas of the market, the returns will follow. And we certainly underwrite you know, our return profiles. You know, we do that process anyway, but you're never going to get there if you're not backing the right companies and that are in the right markets. For us, it's our network, it's our experience. And to your point about the public markets, we've known most of those companies that went boom and bust, and we knew they were bad news bears years ago and just right. waiting for it to play through. And it's unfortunate. You know, I understand from it, a lot of investors, that is their only access point is the public market. And as much as we try to caution that it's not going to end well for most of them, it's, it's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. But you're seeing the transition starting to happen where we're starting to see trickles of institutional capital coming into some of these public names, which will ultimately build into a much longer durable opportunity set because they're not fleeting capital because their time horizons are not a day, a week, a month. Right. You know, they're looking at this is cannabis going from 13, 15 billion, you know, from a year ago is eight or nine billion and heading to 50 plus billion. So they're looking at the next multiples to get that capital duration. They're willing to stick around. And that's the great thing about like some of the funds like us, you know, being a, a fixed life fund, knowing where that horizon is going to be and believing you know, that return environment will pay out as more and more institutional capital comes in. The question that we always get is like, how did you know? How did you know to get behind yeah. GTI and not X, Y, and Z? Back to the people. We saw Ben and Andy and Anthony, and they really were not getting sucked into the noise and, and chaos. And they've just stayed on that mantra. I think really just the fact that you have been in this since the, you're one of the first investors, and you've seen the ups, the downs, you've seen the good actors, the bad actors, and just your point that you made about California. There's tons of opportunity there, but there's tons of peril there as well. And I think that if I were talking to an investor, I would say that it probably makes a lot more sense to work with a firm like Poseidon than to try to go off on your own and try to cherry pick. And, and it just it's just too much peril right now. And I have all of Morgan's and Poseidon's information in the show notes. You can just click the link. So if you're a company that's looking to raise capital or you're looking for somebody to manage your cannabis investments, I'm sure Morgan would be happy to speak with you. Morgan, I wish we had more time today. We have a lot of stuff that we didn't get a chance to touch on. So I'll definitely have to have you back in the spring. Well, yes. Yeah, that'll be here before we know. But thank you for having me on. Crappy's Feel Better Company is a cannabinoid CPG company with a line of easy-to-use CBG, CBD, and CBN products built for the weekend warriors, the weekday Zoomers, and anyone in between. Crappy's next-gen products incorporate pharmaceutical-derived chemistry to precisely blend minor cannabinoids and terpenes, creating a series of proprietary formulas for hyper-targeted use cases. Harnessing a team of experts with over 75 combined years of chemistry experience, the company relies on its novel solubility technology, state-of-the-art delivery, consistent results, and unique eye-catching branding to stand out from the crowd. Crappy's executive team and chemists have created a vast and diverse product pipeline to maintain relevance in a saturated market. To find out how you can participate in Crappy's Feel Better expansion, which includes major retail placements, university-executed clinical trials, IP and patent submissions, GMP and API scale-up, and international distribution? Go to crappiesfeelbetter.com or on Instagram at crappiesfeelbetter. 
Today's show is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors, like Alt36, the country's premier blockchain payment processing platform that's providing dispensaries and its customers with a safe and secure payment option other than cash. To learn more, go to alt36.com. 